The second process is respiration. Respiration, as we said before, is the complement of photosynthesis only in as far as the reactants of photosynthesis are the products of respiration and vice versa. But what we actually now recognize is that respiration is a very general term and there's a couple of different types of respiration, anaerobic, which is in the absence of oxygen, or aerobic. There are two main types of anaerobic respiration. Uh, alcohol fermentation, which is carried out by yeasts and is used in the um, alcohol industry. And when the glucose is broken down in the absence of oxygen, we get carbon dioxide being produced, but we also get ethanol. The other form of anaerobic respiration is one that actually occurs uh, for us if we uh, have, say, exercised for long periods of time, we've depleted the oxygen levels in our muscles, we can go into lactic acid fermentation. What happens then is that instead of producing carbon dioxide and water, the glucose just pr produces uh, a couple of lactic acid molecules and also produces two ATP. And one of the things that's important about anaerobic respiration is we have a much lower ATP production than we do with aerobic respiration. And of course, aerobic respiration involves uh, excess ox oxygen, so the glucose can be broken down and if you've looked at things like the difference between complete and incomplete combustion, you know if you've got more oxygen, things burn more efficiently and you get more energy. The same is true here. This process releases a lot more energy in the form of ATP when, when there is a lot of oxygen present than when the oxygen is absent. Depending on who you read and where the research is up to, you may find that there are some um, differences in the reporting of exactly how many ATP molecules are produced per glucose molecule in aerobic respiration. The numbers used to be between 36 and 38. Uh, now it seems that as we learn more about these processes and the other um, energy carrier molecules that are involved, that maybe that number is more like 30 to 32. But um, we'll give you that uh, sort of little range there, just, just so you understand the comparison between the amount of ATP available from aerobic respiration compared to uh, anaerobic. And either way, it's still much, much bigger. Uh, I don't want to get into too much of what's happening. You'll notice that uh, one of the important things, we've always talked about structure and function. If you look at the structure of the mitochondria, you see, again, it's structured to increase the size uh, uh, increase the amount of surface area for these reactions to occur. And we see this a lot when we look at different structures. We saw it with the chloroplasts, and we're seeing it here with the mitochondria, large surface area for greater efficiency, greater exchange, higher reaction rates. The um, glucose itself doesn't actually enter the mitochondria um, for the process of respiration. What happens is glycolysis happens first, and that happens in the cytosol, so that's that's part of the cytoplasm, where one glucose molecule will be broken down into two pyruvate molecules. These are three carbon molecules, the pyruvates, and they will be transported into the mitochondria, where the first thing that will happen to them is they'll be converted, they'll release a carbon dioxide, and be converted into a two carbon complex with the acetyl coenzyme A. We're now starting to get again into the very complexity of the biochemistry associated with respiration. And again, you can have a look at this process in more detail. It's called the citric acid cycle or TCA cycle. Uh, or the Krebs cycle, and they'll give you a, a, a mind-blowing experience of um, molecular biochemistry and the biochemical pathways associated with respiration. Again, you don't need to go into that sort of detail. I think it's important, probably um, a few terms here you may not even need. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of the fact that these are very complex processes, but they're both critical processes for all living things. And they're the way in which we get that very, very important energy molecule, ATP, um, which fuels so many of the chemical reactions in our bodies. Thanks for watching.